Good morning. I welcome you to this session. Today we will continue the discussion on normal shock which we have already started the last session. So therefore, if we continue our discussion on normal shock and recall what we have done in the last class that for a friction null flow without heat transfer that means an adiabatic flow the locus in HS plane is known as phenoline was drawn like this. This was known as phenoline and the flow were referred to phenoline flow and this is for a frictional frictional <coughs> adiabatic flow adiabatic flow. If we recall that adiabatic flow, that means the points on this curve represents the state points of a flow with constant stagnation enthalpy because of the condition of this adiabaticness, that is adiabatic flow, but they are the state points in a flow which in which friction will be there. That means they satisfy the adiabatic condition of the constant stagnation enthalpy as well as the steady state continuity equation that means the same mass flow. And also we have recognized that this part that is the positive slope in HS diagram this part represents the supersonic m greater than 1 supersonic flow supersonic flow and this part m less than 1 and represents subsonic flow. And we have also recognized the point where the entropy becomes maximum. This represents m is equal to 1 or sonic flow. And also we have recognized that according to second law of thermodynamics, if a upstream point is there in any part of the curve, either in supersonic or subsonic, the downstream point will always be along the curve in the right direction. So that the flow takes place in such a way that the entropy of the system which is flowing increases. So therefore, we always proceed in the right direction, which concluded one interesting thing is that the effect of friction that means if we see the effect of friction in supersonic flow will be to make the flow towards the sonic and at the same time the effect of friction in subsonic flow was also to make the flow towards the sonic. So this will be the direction of the flow with the effect of friction in case of an adiabatic flow of course so that the entropy increases in the flow according to the second law of thermodynamics. Now we consider another class of flow which is reversible without friction, reversible that means without friction but diabetic flow, that means diabetic flow, that means where the heat flow is there. That means in this case we satisfy the reversible that is zero friction case the momentum equations which ultimately tells that P x plus rho x if x is the suffix s represents one upstream section is P y already we have recognized that in absence of friction the equation of motion or momentum theorem applied to a control volume where the inlet of the control volume refers to the section x and the outlet of the control volume refers to the section y can be written like that where this is known as the impulse function p plus rho v square. So, this is the impulse function corresponding to state x, this is the equality of impulse function. Along with the mass conservation for a steady flow that is the equation of continuity and the equation of state, thermodynamic equation of state h is a function of s and rho, then we can draw the locus of points in similarly in HS plane for this type of flow like this. If we draw this, how can we draw this? Let us follow a routine procedure as I told in case of phenoline flow that we consider first of all the initial states are fixed for a given initial state corresponding to Px, rho x and Vx. First of all, we assume some arbitrary values of Vy and we can calculate the values of rho y from here. Then we can find out the values of 
first of all values of rho y from here, I am sorry the values of rho y from here, then substituting the rho y we can find out the values of p y and then we can find out the values of enthalpy from this functional relationship h as a function of s and rho. So, therefore, we can calculate this curve like this, this is very important a curve like this. So, here one thing is that in this case if we try to find out the h o x that probably I discussed in the last class, it will be not equal to h o y. So, if I find the difference h o y minus h o x, I will be getting a value which is not 0 and this will represent the value of the heat transfer during the process. If it is negative, the heat has been taken out of the system and if it is positive, that means heat has been added to the system. That means, well, that means if we find out the equations from the locus of H s from this sets of equations, of course, here you will have to consider another set that another equations probably the thermodynamic equation of state H as a function of P and rho. So, knowing the P and rho you can find out S and then only you can find out H. So, that you can draw this curve. That means, we are satisfying the momentum equation for inviscid flow, satisfying the continuity equations okay, for steady flow and using the thermodynamic property relations we can draw this. Again I am telling in a routine matter, first you assume V y, then for a given state points at upstream section x we find out rho y similar to that of phenoline as we did, then by knowing rho y from the momentum equations I find P y, then I can use this property relation to find entropy and then we can find out enthalpy from the this property relation enthalpy as a function of entropy and density. So, this way we can find out this curve and this curve is known as Rayleigh line, this curve is known as Rayleigh line, this is known as Rayleigh. Rayleigh line and this flow is referred as Rayleigh line flow, Rayleigh line flow. That means, this is precisely the reversible diabetic flow. Now, you see in Rayleigh line flow, that means the flows which are reversible and diabetic, that means there is an heat transfer. Here you see where I have not used the condition for equality of this stagnation enthalpy. So, therefore, this stagnation enthalpy in general will not be equal, it may or may not be equal, but the difference in stagnation enthalpy for Rayleigh line flow indicates the heat transfer. That means, if H o y minus H o x, y is the downstream section is greater than 0, heat is being added, otherwise heat is being rejected, taken out. So, therefore, in this case, since the heat transfer is there from the working system which is flowing, that is the flowing medium, the entropy will may increase, may decrease depending upon the situation whether heat is added or heat is taken out. So, therefore, in this case both the directions we can move in the curve. That means, entropy can increase, entropy can decrease, this is because there is a heat transfer. So, therefore, when entropy is increasing, this direction represents the heating. That means, in this direction, this is the heating. That means, when heating is done, so we will move in this direction along the curve, while when the cooling is made, we will move in this direction, this is cooling. That means, we can move towards right along the curve when heating is there, that means which will affect an increase in entropy. Similarly, when cooling is made, we will move along the left of the curve, that means when heat is taken out. So, we can move in both the directions. Again, it can be shown that this part of the curve, the lower part of the curve is associated with m greater than 1 and this upper part of the curve is associated with m less than 1. That means, this is for supersonic flow and this is for subsonic flow where this point is for the sonic condition m is equal to 1. So, if we inspect this curve, we can say that in supersonic flow, if we make heating, that means heating in a supersonic reversible diabetic flow will cause the flow to decelerate and going towards the sonic condition, while the cooling in the supersonic region, that means for a supersonic flow maintaining the reversible condition will make the flow accelerating and going more towards more supersonic region. 
the reverse is happening for subsonic flow. That means, if the flow is subsonic, the heating in a reversible manner will make the flow accelerating and going towards sonic. While in a subsonic flow, if cooling is made, then the flow is decelerated and if the flow is made reversible, then the flow is decelerated and going towards more subsonic region. So, therefore, from this curve, we can infer the effect of heating and cooling in both supersonic and subsonic regime for reversible diabetic flow. All right. Now, this of course, is very difficult to conclude mathematically just from these two equations. You see that if you write the velocity expression, that velocity, uh, well, the Mach number, for example, not the velocity, the Mach number is precisely V by A. Now, if we write the V, expression V, V is given by for a given mass flow, the V and V is equal to uh, rho, sorry, V is equal to mass flow rate divided by rho for a given area and A is root over gamma R T. And if we just substitute rho in terms of pressure and temperature, rho is P by R T because we know that P is equal to rho R T. So, rho is P by R T that means m r t by p root over gamma r t. So, therefore, we see m is proportional to root over t by p. So, therefore, the effect of heat addition will change the m by the combination of the change in t and p. So, both the temperature and pressure changes. So, whether m will increase or not, when heat is added or heat is subtracted depends upon the relative change in root T and P. So, both the temperature and pressure changes simultaneously. So, it is very difficult to be conclusive from this equation of this type until and unless we go for a detailed calculations or a particular type of flow, for example, reversible diabetic flow. And this particular calculation helps us in doing this curve or doing this figure where we can be conclusive that the effect of heating in supersonic flow is to increase the Mach number towards the sonic and similarly the effect of cooling is to decrease the Mach number, uh, sorry to de in decrease the Mach number towards the sonic and to increase the Mach number towards more supersonic region. Now the physical question, now the question is that this graph, this Rayleigh line graph is or the figure is refers to the flow which is reversible diabetic flow. And Phenoline refers to the flow, that means this phenoline refers to the flow frictional adiabatic flow. Now, a shock wave, a shock refers to both conditions of phenoline flow and the Rayleigh line flow. That means, if I now just draw the phenoline and Rayleigh line in a single plane, that means HS diagram, if I draw this phenoline and this is the Rayleigh line, let this is Fano line and let this is Rayleigh line and let this is Rayleigh line. Now, you see that since the shock represents both the Fano line and Rayleigh line flow, we have already discussed that the shock, in case of shock, these equations are valid, this equation is valid, this equation is valid, these are the thermodynamic equations of state or the thermodynamic property relations and along with that the constancy in stagnation enthalpy HOX is HOY is also valid. So, therefore, for a shock to occur both the upstream and downstream points will satisfy all these conditions that means they will lie on both the Rayleigh and Fano line. That means, this intersection of Rayleigh and Fano lines will represent the upstream and downstream points of a shock. So, therefore, in HS plane, if I have a Fano line for a particular stagnation enthalpy and if I have a Rayleigh line, then we can find out this intersection of the Rayleigh and Fano lines are the two points on the shock. That means, if I join these two points, we can get the direction of shock we can sorry we can get the two points that means the line that means the line con line indicating the process of shock now 
question comes whether it is in this direction or it is in this direction. That means, whether our upstream point, if upstream point is this, then downstream point will be that, because they are due to extreme points or if the upstream point is here, the downstream point will be here. But as we have already that, uh, as we have already recognized that the process of shock will occur, because in case of a shock, you see it is so thin and if we take a control volume, so this is the upstream x and y, so d q in either direction is considered to be 0. Therefore, in the process of shock, that means across the shock, the process occurs which is precisely adiabatic. That is why we have made this equation to be valid. So, in this case, the entropy change of the system is the entropy change of the universe. That means, the entropy change will be greater than 0 or the change of entropy will be positive. So, therefore, the process will take place in such a way from upstream to downstream, which will cause the entropy to increase. So, therefore, there is no other go than this point to be the upstream point x and this point to be the downstream point. And these two points intersect in the two regions, one is the m greater than 1 and another is the m less than 1. So, this proves that the shock takes place from uh, supersonic, shock takes place from supersonic to sonic, subsonic, supersonic to subsonic. So, take place from supersonic to subsonic. Well, so therefore, it proves that shock takes place from a supersonic region, so that it takes place from supersonic region to subsonic region. That means, due to the shock, the flow changes from supersonic to subsonic, which finds the direction of the shock. Okay. Now, after this, I will just discuss the shock in normal shock for perfect gases. Perfect gases. Well, shock for perfect gases. Now, we have now, we are interested as I have told you earlier, not in the, not in the interior details of the shock, but let this is the control volume, the upstream and downstream flow properties across the shock. That means, if we know the upstream properties of the shock, what are the corresponding flow properties downstream the shock. Now, to know this explicitly, we have to find out the, we have to know rather explicit algebraic relationships of these thermodynamic property relations or the relationship between pressure, temperature and volume. That means, precisely we have to know the equation of state. So, therefore, equation of state which is very important, equation of state has to be known explicitly. That means, explicit algebraic form of the equation of state should be known for which you have to specify a particular system as the working fluid or the flowing fluid. So, we consider the flowing fluid to be perfect gases or to be a perfect gas. In that case, we can write the equation of state as P is equal to rho R T and all other hypotheses leading to other thermodynamic property relations for perfect gases can be used. Now, let us find out and exploit all those property relations to find out the relationship between flow properties across a shock wave. So, if you recall, we first started with the energy equation h x plus v x square by 2 is equal to h y plus v y square by 2. That means, x refers to the upstream section that is the enthalpy plus the velocity head that is kinetic energy per unit mass. This is the specific enthalpy is equal to h y plus v y square by 2 or precisely we told that h o x is equal to h o y because this represents the stagnation enthalpy referred to this x condition and this is the stagnation enthalpy referred to this y condition. And since there is no heat transfer in this control volume that is from section x to y, the stagnation enthalpy will be equal. Now, since we have now since we have considered the perfect gas as the working fluid, now I can write this as C p t o x is equal to C p t o y. So, therefore, for a perfect gas we tell that since the stagnation enthalpy is same, the stagnation temperature will be same. The stagnation temperatures are the index of stagnation enthalpy because for a perfect gas we can write that enthalpy is C p times the temperature. Now, if we recall the 
relationship between the local temperature to the stagnation temperature because earlier we deduced these ratios taking the stagnation properties as the reference properties if you recall we deduce this equation in terms of the Mach number. That means, if the Mach number is m a, the local temperature that means, the temperature corresponding to the Mach number at any location is expressed in terms of the stagnation temperature by this relation. So, if we utilize this equation for both T x and T y that means, if I write T o by T x that means, with the stagnation temperature m a x square. So, this T o is T o x and T o y by T y is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 all right m a y square. Then we can write from these two that T x T y rather I write by T x T y by T x is equal to 1 plus T y by T x that is this uh, divided by this that means, it will be 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 which one will be there T y by T x huh? m a x huh? 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a y square all right. So, this is one very important relationship that means, the ratio of temperatures can be expressed in terms of the Mach numbers at x and y. Now, if now there are certain algebraic steps there is no such concept of fluid mechanics now at present. So, it is only algebra with the equations. Now, we can write also T y by T x from the equation of state that means, P is equal to rho r t see that T y by T x can be written as P y by P x into rho x by rho y. Okay. This I write from the equation of state P is equal to rho r t that means, P x is rho x that means, you can write P x is rho x r x t x well and P y is rho y r y t y. So, therefore, we can write T y by T x is P y by P x into rho x by rho. Again from the continuity, we can write rho x v x is rho y v y. This is well known continuity at steady state to accommodate the same mass flow rate. Well, so, therefore, rho x by rho y can be substituted from this equation here. So, we get T y by T x is equal to P y by P x into V x by V y. Again, I can write V x by V y in terms of the Mach number. Oh, well, uh, P y by P x into V y by v x, I am sorry, v y by v x, I am sorry, v y by v x. Well, now this can be written in terms of the Mach number, that means, p y, v y can be written as m a y into a y. Similarly, it can be written as p x, m a x into a x. A y x are the sound speeds at the condition y at the condition x. That means, this can be written for perfect gases, p y m a y p x m a x a y is root over gamma r t y and this is root over gamma r t x. This is for perfect gases. We can replace the sound speed or the acoustic speed in terms of the temperature as root over gamma r t y root over gamma. So, if we take this T y T x here, we get T y by T x to the power half is equal to what we get? M a y all right by M a x into 
p y p x all right now i can uh, well p y by p x so i can make this t y by this is square so we can use we can make t y by t x is equal to m a y by m a x into p y by p x whole square all right p y by p x m a y m a y by m a x whole square and m a y by m a x also whole square i am sorry m a y whole square m a x whole square p y by p x whole square all right m a y by m a x p y by p x this is clear all right t y by t x now if i substitute this what we will get that means if i substitute now here just you see that if i substitute you can see this thing no if i can substitute this t y by t x here then what i get i get 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a x s square divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a y square is equal to m a y square okay, divided by m a x square into p y p x whole square. This is all right that means t y by t x I am substituting here. This is p y by p x whole square. Now, I can write p y by p x is equal to m a x that means taking p y by p x in one side by m a y into under root 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a x square divided by under root 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a y. Okay. All right, please check it. So, this is a relationship which is similar to that one T y by T x that means the ratio of the pressure at the downstream to the upstream is m a x by m a y under root of 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a x square 1 plus. All right. Well, okay. Now, so far I have deduced the relationship of T y by T x where I have used only the energy equation for an adiabatic flow. That means, the constancy of stagnation enthalpy and with the use of the equation of state for a perfect gas, that means with this condition the constancy of stagnation temperature. And using the continuity equation, of course, the continuity equation I have used here. So, continuity equation and energy equation, continuity equation for steady flow and energy equation for a adiabatic flow. That means, we have developed this relationship. That means, you should be very careful that these relationships are valid for adiabatic flow and the steady flow. That means, the friction, the absence of friction has not been taken so far. Now, if I consider the momentum equation in absence of friction, then I can write P x plus rho x V x square is equal to p y plus rho y v y square. All right. This is the momentum equations without friction. Now, if you have got any question, you can ask me. Yes, but I can also stop in between. If you have got any query, do you have any query in this relationships t y by t x and p y by p x? It is clear. And this relationship have been derived by using the energy equation for adiabatic flow and the continuity equation, that means this equation, continuity equation for steady flow. So, therefore, these equations are valid, that means P y by P x and oh well T y by T x is valid for an adiabatic flow, adiabatic and steady flow. Well, now if I consider the frictionless flow, then P x plus rho x V x square is P y plus rho y v y square. All right. So, now we can write p x plus what is rho x? Rho x I can write p x for again using the perfect gas as the 
working fluid P x R P is equal to rho R t. So, P by R t very good P by R t x and V x I can write M a x a square into A x a square A x a square. Well, is equal to again I can write plus P y by R T y. I am going probably a little fast. I understand that A m A y square, but these are very simple algebraic arrangements A y square. Now, I can write P x plus P x by R T x M A x a square. What is A x a square again? Gamma R T x. So, similarly here P y plus P y R T y M A y square gamma R T y. That means, we get P x that means, R T x R T x cancels R T y R T y cancels P x plus P x into gamma M A x square is equal to P y plus P y into gamma M A y square. That means, I can write P x into 1 plus gamma M A x square is equal to P y into 1 plus gamma M A y square. That means, from here I get a ratio of P y P x, P y by P x is 1 plus gamma M A x a square divided by 1 plus gamma M A y square. That means, using the reversible condition that is frictionless condition, that means exploiting the momentum equation or the equation of motion in case of no friction that means, the equality of the impulse function, I can straight away deduce P y by P x in terms of the corresponding Mach numbers m a x and m a y. Now, if I equate these two, because for the shock two points, two extreme points in a shock, that means, the upstream point and the downstream point of the shock okay, satisfy all these conditions. That means, the adiabatic conditions, that means, the same stagnation enthalpy and the frictionless conditions that means, the same impulse function this is because the shock is so thin that across the shock the friction if you take a control volume enveloping the shock the friction is 0. So, therefore, uh, therefore, the equality of impulse functions along with the continuity equation for steady state has to be satisfied for both these two points that means, the upstream and the downstream points across of the shock the process of shock. Then we can make this two equal that means, the P y P x developed earlier without considering the equality of the impulse function with the help of the equation of motion and this P y P x here is the concept that why you will make this two equal. Then we can write an expression that if you make this equal then just you can see from your notes that I can write 1 plus gamma m just simply equal x square divided by 1 plus gamma m a y square is equal to m a x you check it whether it is correct I am writing I am writing correctly that root over all right 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a x a square by root over 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a y square or I can write in this fashion that uh, well I can write in this fashion also that uh, m a x into root over 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a x a square divided by 1 plus gamma you check m a x a square that means m a x this one divided by this is equal to this go here that is m a y well root over 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a y square 
divided by that means taking the expression for m a y at one place and m a x at one place. Now, from this equations m a y if you take m a y this in the left hand side and this in the right hand side because our main objective is to solve for the flow properties at y that is the downstream of the shock if the upstream conditions are known. So, now we can say that from these equations one can straightforward find the solution of m a y in terms of m a x and it is not very complicated it is very simple it looks like that if you make if you square it if you square both the sides and equate it you will get a very simple solution like that m a y is equal to m a x this is one trivial solution you get and another solution which is very interesting m y square which is the non trivial solution it is m x square plus 2 by gamma minus 1 2 by gamma by gamma minus 1 m x square minus 1. That means, from this equation if we solve m a y in terms of m a x which is very simple and straightforward comes like this if you make the square both sides and then equate then you will see a trivial solution m a y is equal to m a x and another non trivial solution is like this m y square is this. Now, this trivial solution has got no importance because it physically implies that both the conditions are same that means they refer to the same section, but this is the most important uh, relation where you see that if you put m x is greater than 1 this equation shows that if m x is greater than 1 that already we have proved that the shock wave or shock process the shock takes place rather you can tell shocks takes place in supersonic flow. The shock takes place at supersonic flow. When the flow is supersonic, the shock takes place and the result is a deceleration that means the reduction in the Mach number, the flow comes from supersonic or goes from supersonic to subsonic. That already we have uh, recognized in the HS diagram with Fano line and Rayleigh line and here also we see from this expression that if m x greater than 1, we get m y less than 1. This means the shock occurs in supersonic flow that means upstream point of the shock wave or the shock is the supersonic where it makes the flow after the shock subsonic that means across the shock the flow is supersonic at its upstream and subsonic at its downstream that is due to the shock a supersonic flow becomes subsonic. If you take m x greater than 1 then m y becomes less than 1. Now, this expression is sometimes expressed in terms of a dimensionless velocity. Now, I tell you before that uh, well that sometimes in velocity in a compressible flow is made dimensionless in with re, v made dimensionless v is made dimensionless v is made dimensionless with respect to three reference velocities. In this context you can ask me sir why Mach number is not used as a dimensionless velocity. Mach number is a dimensionless term which contains the velocity, but difficulty is that Mach number can never be used as a dimensionless velocity because this value a also changes because when the velocity changes the value of a is also changes because value of a is the sound velocity root over gamma r t. That means with the flow when the velocity is changing, so sound velocity is changing, velocity of sound is not a fixed one. So, this cannot be taken as a reference velocity for normalizing the velocity. So, therefore, usually the three reference velocities are taken. One is the sound velocity corresponding to stagnation condition that is the velocity, it is the velocity of sound at stagnation condition, velocity of sound at stagnation condition at stagnation condition, velocity of sound at stagnation condition. Another is A star that is velocity of sound at the sonic condition, velocity of sound when the flow reaches sonic, velocity of sound at critical condition that means when the flow reaches at critical condition. Sonic condition means when the flow velocity is sonic rather it is critical condition. Another is the maximum velocity maximum velocity. 
Now, you see the definition of A 0 as you know for a perfect gas is root over gamma r T 0. Well, the definition of A star is root over gamma r T star. We have already recognized this star or asterisk that means, this is the section where the flow velocity has reached sonic that is the critical section that is T star is the critical temperature. What is V max? V max concept is like that if we write the energy equation in terms of CPT for an adiabatic flow that means, you can write CPT already we have recognized this is V square by 2 is equal to CPT 0 that means, this is the stagnation enthalpy that means, taking the section at stagnation point that means, that the reservoir and at any local point with velocity V. So, here I we can write V square by 2 is CPT 0 minus T. So, V will be maximum when T will be 0. So, a reference maximum velocity is defined as V maximum square is 2 C p t 0. C p can be replaced as 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 into R t 0. That means, it is precisely gamma R t 0 is again what a 0 square that means, 2 by gamma minus 1 a 0 square. So, therefore, the V max is the maximum velocity is related to the sound speed velocity of sound at stagnation condition by this equation. So, three of these are used as the reference velocity that means, if I denote a non dimensional velocity V let us denote it by V prime that the actual velocity by the reference velocity. So, any one of these three is taken as the reference velocity, but most usual convention and very convenient is to use a star that is the velocity of sound at critical condition as the reference velocity to express the dimensionless velocity v dash and this is expressed as m a star. So, therefore, one can use a write one can use the a star as the reference velocity and write as m star which is nothing but v by a star. So, m star represents a non dimensional counterpart of a velocity v. That means, if Mach number is m a, that means this m a Mach number refers to a flow velocity v and the corresponding sound velocity a. Both v and a changes, where m a star represents the non dimensional counterpart of the flow velocity v by a star. So, this is the definition of the reference. Uh, non dimensional sorry non dimensional velocity. Now, one can make a relationship between m a star and m a through the use of this equation. If I write this equation again C p now you see that C p t plus v square by 2 if I write this at the two sections that at critical section v star square by 2 rather I write v square by 2 first v square by 2 plus C p t. What is C p t? C p t is we can write gamma by gamma minus 1 r t is equal to C p t star sorry I am sorry v star square by 2 plus gamma r t star by gamma minus 1. So, simply v square by 2 plus a square, this is a square by gamma minus 1, I can write v star square by 2 plus gamma r t star is a star square by gamma minus 1. Now, I can write this v square by 2 plus a square by gamma minus 1. Now, v star and a star is same because at the critical condition v star is equal to a star. So, I can write therefore, a star square into half plus gamma minus 1 which becomes what I can write 2 gamma minus 1 eh? what I can write gamma minus 1 plus 2 that is gamma plus 1 a star square a star a, a star square by 2 gamma plus 1 gamma minus 1. Now, if we divide both the side by a star we get m a star square by 2 plus a square by a star square into 1 by gamma. These are very simple that is why I am going little fast gamma plus 1 
by 2 gamma minus 1. All right. Now, if I express this A by A star in terms of the Mach number like this, that A is equal to what? Root over gamma R T and A star is root over gamma R T star or I can write V by A is equal to M A and V by A star, V star by A star is equal to M A star. So, what is A by A star? So, A by A star please V star by A star that is V by V star that is V by V star. So, you can substitute A by A star in terms of M A by M A star. So, A by what is A by A star is equal to M A star by M A into V by so, please A by A star that means say A is there that means M A star that is V star by V. Okay. That means it becomes simply V by V star is again M, M star that means that will be V by A no. So, what is V by V star? that is m a star. Okay. So, m a star square by m a. Okay. A star is v star. So, v star is a star. So, v by a star is m, m a star. v by a star is m a star. So, you can have it. Okay. So, if you substitute, substitute here, finally, you get an expression like that m in terms of m square in terms of these are simple algebraic steps m star square. So, this is the relationship between the Mach number and the reference dimensionless velocity. Thank you.